Kat, take us through Intel Data Center uh, on Architecture Day. Yeah, so I, I took everybody through the cores, and the cores can go client and data center. And then I hit uh, Alder Lake, which was the client product. And and now I'm going to hit uh, all things uh, uh, data center, which which was which was as equally uh, as 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 impressive. And let me put uh, let me put this up real quick. So from a data center point of view, uh, you're looking at AMX. Uh, you're looking at um, XEHPC which is an architecture for uh, graphics for HPC, AI, and ML. You've got Mount Evans, which is an IPU, also known as the DPU, uh, in regards to Marvell uh, and, and the vernacular that, that NVIDIA does. But um, uh, let me, uh, let me jump, jump in here. Okay. Now I just got notes all over the place here, uh, Daniel. So uh, first off, uh, if if anything, uh, Intel is going straight after NVIDIA's A100 uh, with a product called uh, Pontevecchio. And Pontevecchio is just a, it's the most beastly product uh, that I've seen uh, after the NVIDIA A100. Over 100 billion transistors. Essentially what it's doing is it's accelerating uh, AI, HPC uh, workloads. And that's exactly what the A100 does. Um, and Intel's doing it, gosh, with a ton of technology. I mean, they're taking, they're 3D stacking this thing. Then they're connecting the 3D stacks uh, via EMIB. Uh, they're going, uh, TSMC is doing part of it with N5 process, uh, which is the, uh, the real name for the fake five nanometer. And then the base tile is a uh, Intel 7. I mean, this thing is a, a work of art, art and, and quite frankly, this thing is either going to go down in flames as the second biggest bust in, in Intel uh, history. I would say the first was the many core architecture that uh, they were trying to put together uh, years uh, back, or this is going to be an absolute uh, stunning success. But I believe just based on some of the commitments that some of the national labs uh, have made, uh, they are going to sell uh, many, uh, many of these things. Uh, let me go to Sapphire Rapids. Sapphire Rapids is is essentially the, the code name for the next uh, Xeon. And uh, I've lost my notes, so I'm just uh, riffing uh, at this point. But uh, essentially, it's not a monolithic die. It's a distributed die that's uh, more similar to AMD's Epic architecture and then it's put together uh, via uh, EMIB uh, technology uh, and that's really good you know uh, Intel's issue is not necessarily design it's execution and uh, what we know from a distributed architecture is that your compute tiles are really the only things that have to be in leading edge so uh, compute tiles are on Intel 7 uh, I don't know what the rest of the chip is. My guess is that it's, it's probably uh, 14 nanometer, um, but essentially it lowers risk for manufacturing. Okay, so I know that's not sexy for everybody to hear, but uh, it, it's a reality of where uh, Intel is. Uh, it's all a bunch of P cores. There's no E cores in this. We have no idea how many P cores. Uh, we have a little bit of idea as the performance, but in the server world, uh, it quite frankly, it's about delivered performance, uh, not some um, you know benchmarked uh, specent uh, performance. Uh, interestingly enough, even though it's a radically different architecture, Daniel, the messages between this and Ice Lake uh, are very similar, right? You've got a ton of acceleration. You've got acceleration for data streaming, crypto compression, decompression. Uh, AI, um, which uh, we had before, but th there's an adder uh, which uh, really hits some of the issues with some of the major uh, CSPs uh, out there. And that those are things like data streaming and microservices. So with microservices, is there's this startup penalty and there's this wind down penalty for microservices and Intel is going to be accelerating that. Now, with acceleration, uh, some of it is you have to directly write to an API, uh, which is, um, you know, takes heavy lifting. And some is just inherent 
in in the design uh, itself. Um, obviously, you know the ones that you know aren't going to take acceleration are things like uh, microservices acceleration. Uh, but again, this wasn't a product launch. I have no idea how this compares to AMD. Uh, my guess is, if you had to put a gun to my head, is that it's going to have um, AMD is still going to win on uh, on on multiple cores, uh, and Intel is going to win on everything that's accelerated uh, that's out there. Because quite frankly, AMD doesn't accelerate anything with uh, their last uh, three generations. It's just hardcore you know, integer and floating point and just a ton of cores uh, down there. My uh, my, my final uh, thing I'm going to talk about is, um, uh, you know, as you know, one of the hot topics out there is acceleration at the edge. So offloading, uh, you know, the main server to run apps and everything else is offloaded, uh, networking functions, crypto security, even accelerating uh, storage. Uh, Intel came out with its first ASIC-based um, design called Mount Evans, and that's ASIC versus an FPGA. That means it's hardened. That's mean it's going to be lower power. It's going to mean it's higher performance in the same uh, die space. But this is flying primarily in the face of Marvell and a little bit in the face of NVIDIA. NVIDIA is really focused right now on um, data center networking offload and Marvell uh, is primarily focused on and seeing success in CSP and uh, carrier uh, networking offload. That's it. That's the that's tweet. That's it. That's the tweet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Follow Pat's tweet stream. Pat, write an article for crying out loud. Jeez Louise, you've got this cover, but no, lots of things here. I'm, I'm going to spend a little, uh, just a few minutes, not even because you spent all my minutes talking. Uh, you know, Pat and I, you ever sense that out there? All, you, all of our listeners, that sometimes he and I get a little jelly of each other when, when one of us takes all the oxygen out of the topic. But, uh, you know, look, when it comes to the data center, you know, Intel's got a few major, uh, you know, uh, opportunities and constraints. The opportunities and constraints are one, you know, I talked about this with cores, it's, it's returning on process leadership, it's execution, you know, delays have been its biggest uh, thorn in its side, or recent Sapphire Rapids delay. Uh, even though it was a very brief one, uh, was looked upon very, very negatively. Um, you got a lot going on with both DPUs and acceleration. Um, you know, uh, you saw on the on the client side some announcements about Intel and discrete GPUs, but the you know the space Nvidia plays in uh, the company has been very successful. Uh, is has migrated from training to inference. You know, Cisco has some things, Ponte Vecchio and One API that it's trying to build to become more the center of a uh, you know an AI acceleration uh, GPU uh, existence. But that's a huge market space, and these architectures are going to be key to the company participating and competing in those spaces. Um, I like what uh, you talked about with the edge. Um, I like everything DPU. Uh, it's coming in a number of different fashions, though, right now, and it's going to be very competitive. Marvell executed very well in the DPU space. So Intel you know, is going to definitely have to work very hard uh, see, to compete there. Uh, and I have no doubt that it is capable of doing so. And then, of course, you have to compete with what cloud providers are doing on their own. You look at things like AWS Nitro and what has been created in the public cloud to be able to do these things. But, of course, that's for public cloud workloads. Intel is great not only in the public cloud and being a cloud partner, but also, obviously, to all of those prime data centers that are going to require compute power and all those OEMs that are going to build hardware to support that investment. 